Hey friends, how's it going? Ash here. Welcome back to Gen Sense. It's Parfums de Broly time. Parfums de Marley. We're uh, taking a look at 15 Parfums de Marley fragrances for men, and we're going to be ranking them from best to worst. They have more than 15 fragrances for men, so I tried to take basically the 15 most popular and then rank those ones out. So it's not going to be every Parfums de Marley fragrance for men, but it's going to be the overwhelming majority of Parfums de Marley fragrances for men that people are actively looking for. Now each one of these is going to be linked in the description below. Feel free to check them out down there. It is a little bit harder to find Parfums de Marley fragrances at a good discount nowadays, but in general, Parfums de Marley is a really nice niche brand, especially for people that are getting started with niche fragrances, because by and large, Parfums de Marley fragrances are pretty easy to wear. They get compliments, they have good versatility, they have good quality, nice projection, longevity, the whole deal. So it takes a lot of boxes for people. As always, here are a bunch of codes. Feel free to use these codes when you shop at any of these different websites uh, that the codes are associated with. Save yourself a little bit of money each time you shop at these stores. All right, so we're gonna start at number 15 and work our way up to number one. Number 15 being the one that I think is worst of the bunch. Number one, of course, being the best. All right, number 15, the worst of the bunch for me is Kalan. By and large, I like pretty much everything Parfums de Marly does. I mean, some I like more than others. There are some fragrances that I think are decent, maybe not amazing, but at least decent. This one, I, I just don't like at all. This is easily my least favorite Parfums de Marly fragrance. I, I don't even think it really smells good. I don't enjoy smelling it at all. It's kind of earthy, dry, spicy, not really appealing. It, it doesn't have a lot of versatility for me and just in general smells unappealing. The best thing about it is the bottle. The bottle looks cool. I like the look, looking nice. It's one of those deals, don't judge a book by its cover. You know, it's like, I don't know, a guy wearing a really finely tailored suit or a woman in a fantastic dress and you go speak to them and they're just scum of the earth. He's the scum of the earth. That's kind of this. You see it and you're like, oh wow, that looks great, man. I bet this is gonna smell awesome. How much did you say this was? Oh yeah, it smells real good. It's it's really good, man. I'm, I'm gonna go check these fragrances over here real quick. I'll be right back. I'll buy that one later. Trust me, I'll be back. Trust me. So Kalan, number 15, don't like it. Number 14 for me is Galloway. Now Galloway does not smell bad. It's just when you compare it to pretty much all of the other Parfums de Marly fragrances, it's kind of hard for it to stick out all that much. And it does smell similar to Lalique White, which is very cheap. So when you factor that together, it just makes it kind of a hard buy, you know, kind of a hard fragrance to recommend because if you like this, you can get something that smells super similar to it, also in a white bottle, go figure, that is uh, like 10% the cost. Now you could say this is a little bit smoother than Lalique White with maybe a little touch more sweetness, not as pencil-y smelling, but it still is quite close enough that if you're familiar with that one, you're gonna be really familiar with this one too. On the positive side, it's a nice fragrance for spring, for fall. Also could pull it off during summer if you wanted to. Nice office fragrance, good casual fragrance as well. So you get a lot of versatility here. It just doesn't have a big wow factor as far as pulling unsolicited attention. And then that similarity to Lalique White knocks it down a little bit as well. So we're gonna put that one at number 14. Number 13 is Pegasus. Now, a lot of people out there love their Pegasus, and they're gonna tell me I'm wrong and that it should be way higher up on the list, but just looking through everything that this is up against, I would rather wear just about anything else other than maybe these over Pegasus. Sorry about that if you really love this one, it's just for me, Pegasus has always been a weaker release from the house, not in terms of performance, just overall smell. This one right here smells a bit similar to Dior's Hypnotic Poison. And I do have that one, my wife has it technically, and I have compared them, and yes, there is a similarity. The almond is the main note here that people really kind of cling on to, the thing that they remember about this fragrance. It's not as powdery as Hypnotic Poison, it does come across a little bit more masculine than that fragrance, but still, at the end of the day, when I smell this one, I kind of think back to that one. And it just, in general, is not a scent profile uh, that works all that well for me. 
So these three pretty comfortably for me are at the bottom. Like if you bring up this 15 to me, these 15 fragrances, some of them, depending on my mood, might shift a little bit up or down. These three pretty much always gonna be at the bottom. Number 12 is Greenly. Greenly is, believe it or not, green. It has kind of an apple opening, apple shampoo kind of feel to it. Then you have uh, cedar, you have pettigrain in here, you've got uh, musk, amber wood as it dries down. It smells good, it smells pleasant, really nice for spring, especially during the daytime. As I said, I don't dislike it, but uh, it's up against some killers. And so it slots in above these, but under pretty much everything else. Number 11 is Godolphin. Now, if you are unaware of this for any reason, it smells kind of like Tuscan leather. So yeah, this is basically like Parfums de Marley's take on Tom Ford Tuscan leather, quite similar to that one. There are a number of Parfums de Marley fragrances that do have similarities to other popular things out there. Sometimes it is a designer fragrance, and then the Parfums de Marley is basically like a, an amped up, higher quality take on that designer fragrance that happens, but it is a recurring trend. So you'll hear that a little bit more as we go on with maybe some of these others. So Tuscan leather, that's what this smells like or similar to. It's a really nice leather fragrance. It's well done, has good sweetness. It is a one that you can pull off very easily during fall and winter time. The reason it's down here is because it does have that very close similarity to Tuscan leather. And uh, a lot of the other fragrances that are above this one kind of jump out at me a little bit more. We are in the top 10 now, and we're kicking off the top 10 with Halton. This one is uh, their Herod's exclusive, was their Herod's exclusive, hence the uh, paint scheme on the bottle here. And this one is really nice, but it smells a bit similar to Oud for Greatness. So it's essentially like PDM's take on that one. And you can tell the second you spray this on that that's what's going on. I do like it though, as I said, the quality is nice. It's a little more masculine leaning than Oud for Greatness. So if I paired this up with that one and you know was deciding which one to wear, I'd pick this one most often. Really nice performance. It does stand out, especially compared to your more typical designer fragrance out there. It's just, um, you know, similar to another, it's just where this one does have that close similarity to Oud for Greatness and is typically more pricey than the other PDM fragrances. It gets bumped down a bit. So number 10 for this one, though I do think it's solid. Number nine, Pegasus Exclusif. Yeah, I think Pegasus Exclusif way better than the original Pegasus. Why is that, you may say? Well, it just smells like it's higher quality. It smells more interesting, more unique, more masculine. The uh, almond doesn't come across with that kind of screechy, almost metallic feel that you can get in Pegasus. It is darker, it's slightly more animalic, but overall, Pegasus Exclusive, I think, is better uh, over Pegasus, and I would pretty much never choose to wear this over this. Number eight is the new kid on the block. Look at that. Altair, this one is uh, one that's grown on me a good amount, and it is quite sweet. It does have some similarities, kind of, to some other fragrances out there, but I will say that it absolutely does not have enough similarity to anything out there to draw a direct comparison like we've been able to do with some of these others. So it's one of those kind of fragrances where you smell it and you're like, oh, maybe a little this, little that, little this, little that, little this, but ultimately it turns into something its own, something unique. It's one that the more I wear it, the more I like it, and it has a, a really nice warm sweetness to it. It's vanilla forward, but that works for me because I really enjoy vanilla. Great for fall and winter time and a solid compliment puller as well. So number eight for now, you know, it, it could creep a little bit higher. It's not at the tippy top. For sure, there are fragrances from PDM that I'll always like more than this one, but this is very good. And the more I wear it, like I said a couple times, the more I like it. So this one more so than any of the ones we've talked about so far, could bump up like one or two as time goes on. It's pretty good. Number seven is Percival. Now, if you were gonna say something negatively about this, if you're gonna bring something up about this that you could use as, uh, you know, ammo to move it down the list, it would be the similarity it has to uh, a couple other really popular fragrances that are both designers, and that is Abercrombie & Fitch Fierce and Mont Blanc Legend. This certainly has that uh, kind of feel to it, although, as I mentioned earlier, done at a higher level. 
Now, if you were just seeking a fragrance that's gonna have a fantastic versatility that you can use pretty much year round, daytime or evening, that's going to pull positive attention with good uh, staying power that has a nice clean kind of out of the shower feel to it to an extent, this will do that for you. Number six, after this, we're in the top five, Sedley. For the most part, I think that Parfums de Marly does uh, their cool weather fragrances a little bit better. But these two, Percival and Sedley especially, do really shine for being fantastic warm weather scents. What they do, they do extremely well. Sedley has a really nice citrusy mint opening, a kind of ambroxany as it dries down. It is gonna be, I would say, a bit fresher than Percival, which you can probably tell just by the coloration of the bottle. Not that Percival isn't fresh, just that this kind of takes it up a little bit more. Really nice and brisk off the top. Pretty much nobody is gonna dislike it. If you were going to knock it for something, it would be for maybe not being quite unique enough. But I think it is an amazing fragrance for pretty much everybody. Number five, Carlisle. This is a little bit more expensive than the other Parfums de Marly fragrances. It has amazing quality and staying power. It's a little bit similar to Mancera's Red Tobacco. It's not as aggressive as Red Tobacco. You know, it doesn't have that huge chemical blast off the top. It's much smoother than that. A little bit maybe earthier, you could say, than Red Tobacco. And uh, even though I don't believe that tobacco is an official note in here, obviously with it smelling similar to red tobacco, some people are gonna draw that comparison and kind of get a tobacco flair from this one. Sophisticated, grown up, but still not smelling dated. Carlisle is awesome. The vanilla and tonka in here especially, you pick it up pretty much right away. And as it dries down, it just smells so rich. It's really well done. And it's worth that little increase in price. Number four is Leighton Exclusif. So Leighton, we haven't seen that one yet, but Leighton Exclusif is uh, essentially a little bit of a darker take on that DNA of the original. It adds some animalic notes in there, which thankfully is not taken too far. So it still maintains that you know sex appeal, that compliment factor that the original Leighton has. And depending on what you want, from the fragrance, you may like Leighton more or Leighton Exclusive more or you know, sometimes one or sometimes the other, depending on what you're doing. I think on the whole, Leighton is a little easier to pull off, but then this one has a little more complexity, so sometimes it could be a little more interesting for you to wear. So Leighton Exclusive, number four, really, really well done. And another one that's a little bit pricier than the average. We're in the top three, so these are just the creme de la creme. Number three, Wajon. This guy was at one point in time a real hype beast. I mean, so was Carlisle when that one was brand new. This one was as well. This is just a masterclass of warm spices. The cinnamon off the top is just grabs your attention. It's intoxicating, it's alluring, it's sexy, it's edible almost. It's covered in honey. And then you have uh, resins, amber underneath, vanilla, once again, popping up here in a big way. It's a fragrance that I think is just top notch. It does share similarities to some other things out there. Ombre Nargi from Hermes, most prominently, and uh, actually Angel Share, which came along later. It smells a little similar to this one. So if you like Angel Share, probably like this. All right, number two, Herod. Now, Herod is a tobacco fragrance and it's one of the best on the market as far as just, again, easy going, easy wearing, sweet tobacco fragrances, especially in the niche realm. Keeps things interesting. It doesn't, you know, try to follow exactly what other brands have done, but it stays in that familiar territory, that kind of warm, sweet pipe tobacco territory. It even includes Osmanthus as one of the supporting notes, which gives it an interesting edge as it heads through the mid. Fall and winter time, anytime you can wear that. It is one of the best tobacco fragrances, period, as I said, but it is not the number one. For me, the number one fragrance from Parfums de Marly, if I could only keep one, is Leighton. I know, I know, it's, it's, it's Leighton, I, I know. If I were talking about Creed, and then the winning fragrance is Aventus, it's one of those deals where you're just like, okay, we get it. But this stuff is so 
good. And for me, I feel like Layton is their crowning achievement. Now, with a lot of these other fragrances, as good as they are, and a lot of these fragrances are fantastic. Don't get it twisted. But with a lot of these fragrances, you could say, oh, this smells kind of like that. This smells kind of like that. This smells kind of like that. With Layton, you could try to do that. People have said, you know, oh, it's maybe a little bit this, a little bit that, a niche boss bottled or something. But I don't really think so. And I think at this point, everybody's kind of on the same page. Layton smells like Layton. When you smell Layton, you know right away, that's Layton. As a fragrance, it is now just its own thing. It's its own category. You know how there are Baccarat Rouge 540 smelling fragrances. There are Aventus smelling fragrances. There are Layton smelling fragrances. Apple, lavender, vanilla, cardamom, it is one of the best fragrances for fall and winter ever made if we're talking about designer sensibilities with niche quality. I love Layton, I will always have a bottle. That's number one for me. So there we go, 15 parfums to Marley from worst to best. Like I said, uh, depending on the day you catch me, maybe like these get swapped or something like that, but for the most part, it would be about like this. Let me know in the comments your top three favorite PDMs. Also let me know your least favorite if you want to. They got a lot to choose from. Thank you guys for hanging with me. Stay safe out there and I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later.